Newly minted Mayor Tim Keequam has been busy improving Couillard Shores, so busy that he hasn't been able to maintain his responsibilities with Ojibwe Organics and Chippewa Lumber. Understanding this, he resigns his leadership positions at both of the endeavors to ensure that he can focus on leadership at both the city and the tribal level. Tribal council members were impressed by Ben McGay's handling of himself during the election, and when he expresses interest in leading the lumber company, he is offered the role. Upon settling into his new role, Ben quickly determines three constraints to continued growth of the lumber company. First, there's just not enough employees in the area and Couillard Shores seems to lack developable land. Second, there's no high school in Couillard Shores. Without a high school, employees are not adequately prepared for many of the skilled roles within the company. And third, the community is completely dependent upon trucks for shipping. Without either a cargo train terminal or a harbor, freight is being shipped by the most cumbersome and expensive method possible, trucks. Today, we're going to be remedying these issues. We'll be increasing our residential footprint within the community, building a high school, and building a new freight train terminal to provide the industry options for importing and exporting goods. We'll also spend a bit of time expanding our industry and making sure that we're meeting all of our city's needs from a city services standpoint. And if you're enjoying this build, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Let me know your favorite part about the build and let me know what I should improve. It really does help increase the reach of the video. But we've got a lot to do today, so let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Couillard Shores in Nicolet Bay. And this is really illustrative of some of the problems that we are having in the city right now. We've got a number of city services that we need to respond to. I think fire is obviously the most pressing, but it's not the only one. If we take a look here, we've got problems with our water and our sewage, and it might force us to change our plans a little bit. And that's the thing about plans. They're never static. So we can modify our plans. And the plans that we're gonna modify specifically are for this area right here. We talked about this potentially being a, a place for a resort. I don't think it's gonna be part of the plans anymore. We are gonna to need to take this and replan this out for some city services, which is unfortunate. It's a very pretty location, but at that, sometimes you need to, to, to roll with the punches. So the city is gonna take this land, purchase it, and use it for a city services campus. On this campus, we're gonna have both water and we're gonna have fire coverage. So I'm moving quickly because our city is burning down. Call a mulligan on this road. This is our planning road anyway. That's what we use our dirty dirt roads as, not our dirty roads. <laughs> Although they are dirty, I suppose. So there we go. And we are going to, first of all, I'm gonna add in a frontage road. This frontage road where our, is, is gonna be where we place our water treatment facilities. Now, I'm gonna place two of these. We're gonna go with something larger, and you might think, oh boy, why are you doing this? There's a couple of reasons. First of all, we just, we're really space constrained right here. So I think we need to think up front. Now, obviously in reality, you wouldn't build two water treatment plants up front, but in the game, we have to take some liberties sometimes and make sure that we have this. Maybe I won't build it, maybe I'll just, plan it out and you can see that we're gonna have to dig a bit into the ground to make this work in the future i'm gonna do it <laughs> so we're gonna place this i'm gonna turn it off right away and i, I know that that might not be a, a loved decision i just want to make sure that we're planning our space appropriately and our roadway network around this so what we're doing is building up the shore just a little bit we'll kick the sand down We'll come in at a nice 90 here. And again here and another 90. Okay, so this is our little water campus. So this is gonna be really important for our city in the future. And again, I we've got one of these turned off. Neither of them are connected up. I did add a mod to the, to the list. This is a quality of life mod that I meant to have in the list. There'll probably be a couple of more of these that come up. I've added toggleable whiteness. The main reason is some folks who watch these videos may have epilepsy. This is something I think in all of my builds I should add across the board. I don't want to flash at people. I don't think that that's a, the right thing to do. So we're gonna start to be a little more thoughtful with our whiteness. And that's basically what toggleable whiteness does. I can come in here and it doesn't give me the underground or white view. Uh, if I wanna see that, I have to be thoughtful about it and, and deliver it and go into the info views to be able to see that. All right. So we've got lots of crazy looping around here. I did see in the comments, you guys gave me some good suggestions on how to resolve this. 
We're not gonna do it today, but I think that we have a solution. Ultimately, what we need to do, split our, our highway into two separate roads, and hopefully that will resolve it. That's, that's what I've read in the comments. I haven't tested it out yet, but I trust you guys. You guys know what you're talking about. So we're gonna give it a go, just not today. That might be a stream thing. And then if it works, I'm likely to update the map on Steam. So if you haven't built on the map yet, but you've thought about it, there might be an improvement coming your way. I'm going to extend this power line all the way down the coast to our existing treatment plant. And I would delete this now, the height of realism, but I want to make sure, I believe I got the, yeah, we're connected there. Our power's good now, and now we can delete this. The other thing that we're going to do while we're over here, let's get this upgraded to an industrial road. There we go. So the other thing we have to do, let's see if our fire is still raging. It is. <laughs> We've got to get something going right here for our fire department. So we really need a fire helicopter depot. Again, we're going to have to take some liberties here. I think we're going to grade it out here. This isn't the height of realism, but we don't have a lot of space right now. And I do want to keep this within Couillard Shores for the most part. So the city will have some land reclamation. So maybe this occurred because uh, they have been doing some land reclamation with their landfill, getting some of their garbage and making islands out here. or <laughs> something of that nature. I'm looking at you, Green Bay. I'm looking at you. And I've cleaned up some of the, the shore, which unfortunately means that I've also flooded everything out right here. Hopefully they've deployed, they have, so we are at least in a good spot there. <laughs> there we go. And hopefully everything over here hasn't been destroyed. Honestly, it doesn't look that bad. We've lost a couple of things. We don't have the resources to actually repair this. So again, I'm gonna do something that's not super reasonable. And we're gonna reset that. I will build at some point a disaster response unit. We're just not there quite yet. And I'm not even sure where that's going to fit well into this build. There's such big buildings. So it's certainly something that we're going to have to think about. We're going to need one more facility. And that's our fire watchtower. Now, thankfully, these cover a large area. We're going to place this within our forestry industry. Right at the corner of this road here. It's a pretty high location. I don't know that it's our highest. Actually, we need to move that. That was not a good location. Especially when we're right here. That's an ideal location, and we can create a path going up there. Okay, and I wanted to make this look a little bit better. It's obviously really challenging with these non-self-leveling roads, but it's certainly better than it was. So we still have water availability problems. Our sewage treatment's in a better place. For our water availability, we're going to use one of our pumps. So we've got to keep that away from these large processing plants. The, the Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, there we are again with our crazy tourists. Love it. <laughs> We're going to take our pump and place that closer to the city. And these are certainly things that you could see. I have a nondescript locations. There we go. I couldn't see that, but I knew that there was a pipe there because it's underneath the road right where it belongs. So there we go. All right. And with that in place, I think that we're finally in a place. The fires are going to be out soon. We can start thinking about our high school. So this is a, a huge need in the community. If we take a look, we currently have 409 students that could be enrolled in high school that are not currently enrolled. So we need to start to think about where an appropriate place for a high school would be, which leads me back to the contours. And if we look, there are not many flat places on this map anymore. In fact, we could carve into the hill here and <laughs> try to get it back here, you know, try to terrace it. Same thing here, or we could go way over here, which isn't the most reasonable location in my estimation. You could also come up here, but now we're in the town of Couillard and, 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 and that just being in the town of Couillard doesn't make a ton of sense. I, I would think that the, we would want to keep this close to where the students are, which is in the city. So that leads me to this location right here. It's not the most obvious location, but I think that we can make this one work. So generally, when money is approved for a school, they'll go to a referendum with some preliminary engineering, some general costs for what a school would, would cost. And I think that right here, we could say that the school's going to cost X number of dollars. And we're not talking about the, we're talking about the general location. 
we're gonna make it work and without people walking over here and seeing just how crazy it is maybe we get that passed because people are desperate for a school so we're gonna go with this we need to pay attention to something though so we need this can't be a cul-de-sac and if we just connect up in the most logical location right here the easiest location it's a cul-de-sac we're gonna need to connect all the way through and we're gonna call a bit of a mulligan on this road I think that this road needs to be the through route. This is really steep though. And over here, it's not gonna be quite so steep because we're gonna carve right through here, blast right through. And that's gonna mean that this is a fairly gentle slope. Whereas this one, uh, it's 40 meters maybe down. That's gonna be very steep. So we need to choose a terrain height that's as low as possible. And that's gonna be this one right here. We'll come up and make a clearing here. And this is the height that we're gonna use for our school. So I'm going to pull this right back here and here where we were filling a bit, now we're cutting a whole bunch and then I'm going to try to follow a, a contour line a bit, not going to be perfect and that's okay, but our high school needs space. So we've got to be very aware of that. And then through here, there's two things I want to do. First of all, we're going to level a pad here where our road's going to go. Let's slope through here. We'll cut. And we could be level all the way through here. That would have been blasting. And now here we can do our sloping and that's much gentler. So right mouse click up here, left click here, come around and look at that. So we're going to use our dirt roads as our planning roads, pop into our rural roads. We've got angle on, it's all that we need. Actually, we'll go with road length as well. We'll bring this right up here. Now I'm going to turn off zoning. So we'll disable our zoning. I don't want to disrupt the existing homes. And I've still got my tree anarchy on because I'm going to clear these trees after the fact. So we're pulling this up through here. And then I'm not going to worry about the high school just yet. We're going to keep that right here. And you know what? I can't, I can't see anymore with all these trees. Okay, much better. So our high school, we focused right here, looking out towards the water because it's beautiful. Why wouldn't you? And then the road will be in the back. And that won't be the, the focus of this area. We don't want a prominent road feature. <laughs> I'm sure that some people would. I'm not one of those people, though. All right. So here, height of realism. I'm going to sever this connection and bring back our dirt road. So I'm going to level this right here. And we're going to slope through here. So I'm going to start maybe back here and slope up. Wow. That's a lot of cutting. Okay, and I wanted to do this so that we make the dominant movement through here, kind of what is going to ultimately be a bit of an arterial connection all the way through from this arterial straight across to here, getting people directly into the community. And you can already see what a steep monstrosity this really is. But we've got to do it. And over here, you can see how gentle it is. And I'm, I'm nervous about that. So we're going to turn on our road guidelines. Get this moving back here. I think I've got to back this off just a bit. There we go. So now the part that we've all been waiting for, how bad? What is our damage? What is our damage? Ooh, 13% at, at one point. I'm gonna bring it up to here. At least we've got a couple of rational numbers. Now we're at 11. Pull it back to here. Nine, seven. Uh, I think we're gonna go with that. And here, three. Truthfully, I could probably bring it one more back to really make this better. I hate that, <laughs> but we're going to go with it. And uh, that is going to make this, it'll be a better solution for heavy vehicles. And I'm hitting the wrong button. I'm trying to clear trees, not just plant random trees right here. That's not the goal. There we go. Now that we've got that done, we've got one location where we can bring our connection in for our high school. So let's place our connection, our high school first gonna bring our zoning back right here and here's our high schools so we've got three options now which is kind of fun we've got our high capacity high school obviously not going with that that's crazy we've got our normal vanilla high school it's fine it's kind of weird looking in my opinion I've, I've never really loved this asset I do love the European asset I honestly think that the U university for the European asset and the high school just look better and more natural I don't feel that way about the elementary school maybe that's the way they look in Europe a little bit more, but uh, I do think that universal style elementary school 
the European style high school and the European university are the nicest looking assets. So we're gonna place that here. And then I'm gonna run this road right back here. We're gonna bring this in at a 90 and we're gonna add a parking facility. So that's, we created a bit too much back here, but we're gonna use that to our advantage. So this could either be a parking facility or it could be some of our sporting amenities. Truthfully, I think it might be a better a better place for some of our sporting amenities. So let's let's take a look at what we have available to us. We don't have a lot. So we, we have our tennis court. I think we're going to add a couple. Ooh, that's not enough space. We're going to have to do that over here. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. That was not what I was hoping to do. The only other option would be to pull this back just a little bit. Holding down alt, pulling it, pulling it. Okay. That should have done the trick for us. So I think we can we can be happy with that. Now again, we'll bring this back to ground level. And now we should be able to fit in some of those some of those sporting facilities. So here we go. We'll grab a couple of tennis courts, basketball court, and I'd love to have a pool. I just don't think that that's in the cards for us. If we take a look and truthfully, it's a temperate climate anyway. You could have an outdoor pool. We do have them. They just uh, they're really expensive to maintain. Uh, in, in a community that I worked, there was a municipal pool and the thing just leaked like a sieve. It was difficult to maintain. It was a money losing proposition, which I get it. Cities don't exist to make money. That's not their goal. But when it's a, you, a facility that's only used for part of the year and it's really, 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 really expensive, it can be tough to justify. And look at at least this is expensive. We don't have enough money for this anyway. So I guess that solves our problem for us. We are going to build a little parking lot right here. And I think this is going to be the road that I use throughout this area anyway. I think it's a nice solution. And I'm going to hop in move it, hold down alt and pull this back to try to get our roads to line up in logical locations. I'm going to end this road here. We're going to reserve this space and maybe in the future we can build a pool at the high school. We are going to build in our parking facilities here, starting out with our accessible parking right up front. Let's see if we can figure out where our doors are right there. There we go. And through here again, we're just going to add in a little bit of landscaping, maybe some nice bushes. And we'll just add a couple of trees. We don't need to go crazy with the trees. I was initially going to just go all the way across here, but we are going to add in one path right here so that someone can get from the accessible parking across to the school. And we'll go through node controller and add a crossing here. And it's unfortunate with this particular road, you can't see it. And that might cause me to use a different one. Okay, there we go. We've got to add in our path right back. But there we go. We're good to go. Good to go, although that didn't work. <laughs> so There we go. So I think that now we're in a good spot there. We could add in a bit more landscaping if we wanted to make this feel a little bit more fleshed out. And I do think that there would be value in using Bob right here. So we're going to do that. Alt B, go into here. Look at the trees that we've got here. We've got some bushes. We can go into our MP9s again and find our newer bushes. Wild Hedge, Apply, Tree Variant. That's not, not beautiful. Let's see if we have anything that looks better. That's not better. <laughs> That's not either. It looks kind of weird having a bunch of pine trees like that, but I think it's the best option that we have. So we're going to go with it. Now, we need to get water pipes here. We're going to put those underneath the road right where they belong. And we should have a power problem here as well. So we're going to connect up our power lines here. And there we go. So we've got power. We've got water. We need better transportation facilities to get here. So we are going to add in some of our city streets on this side of the entryway to the high school. So making sure that on the way into the high school, there are sidewalks. So I have my anarchy on because I have my my power lines there and I have zoning off here just so that I don't again disrupt the zoning here. And then on the other side, we're going to go with our highway. 
And that's just to kind of prevent some of that walking because this could be used as a freight facility in this particular location. We don't want people walking down here if we can avoid it. And you kind of get trapped anyway. In the future, I could see this becoming more of a city street, but for the time being, it is not. It's rural in character. You can walk to the high school and that's about it. We do need to take a look at our speeds here though, because right now they're a bit much. So let's look. And right here, we've got 45, probably a bit too fast by the high school. So we're gonna go with 35 right here and drop it down to 25 when you get close to the high school. During the school day, this would probably be 15. Then I'll drop it down at that road right in front of the high school as well. Feeling good about this, we're gonna come through with our brush, our tree brush. I'm gonna turn off Anarchy now and just fill in some of these locations. There we go, there we go. Feeling good about this, that, in my opinion, looks very, very good. So now that we've got that, we've got to start thinking about the rest of the build. And that is residential expansion. So that's one of our major issues now. We're unable to grow this industry right here because we just don't have enough workers. So if we take a look at our industry right now, we currently have almost 400 jobs available. So we would take a look at the city and see where we could potentially expand. And if we look at Cuyard Shores and we look at our contours, you can see that we're basically out of developable land in the city. And here's a here's a thing that you might have thought about looking at your own community. Why doesn't the city just keep growing? Why doesn't the city just annex this and continue to grow up here? So there could be a number of reasons. First of all, it could be that your regional planning commission or council of governments has not authorized urban expansion in this area. And that could be because they want to prevent sprawl. There could also be just gravity limitations. <laughs> You know, there's an old saying, poop rolls downhill, and it flows downhill too. And if you build in the wrong area, you have to build a lift station to get the sanitary sewer to actually flow appropriately. And those are expensive. So a city might say it's not in their best interest, or they might just have a boundary agreement with a neighboring municipality, including an unincorporated area that prevents them from sprawling into that area. Anyway, that's an aside. We're going to develop this as a rural area because it would be very difficult to serve this area with municipal utilities. Obviously it's city skyline, so we could do whatever we want, <laughs> but we are gonna do it this way. So the one thing, there were questions about this road right here. What is going on with this? This is now gonna become a dirt road. It's gonna become a residential connection. I should have made this connection up front because this would be almost impossible to get after the fact, <laughs> but, but we're gonna play the game a little bit here and we'll extend a connection here and I'm going to slope from here down to here. I'm using my freeform tool a bit here and I'm going to leave my anarchy on the main reasons. I just want to see where my trees are. There they are. They're everywhere. Now we can delete them. Perfect. So now we've got some buildable pads here and we could have some homes along here. We might even be able to, to work out a couple more, but we're going to, basically plat out this entire area. So there are some rural developers that might come in and do this. Normally this would take forever to develop, <laughs> but because there's such a high need for, for employees here, it's gonna go a bit faster for us. So I'm gonna leave Anarchy on all around. We're gonna plat out all the roads here, and then we're gonna build this area. And I'm gonna do something a little bit different, and we're gonna add in some city services uh, through here as well again kind of sparingly because this is, is a rural area now the whole i guess the primary way that we're going to choose our roadway layout is we're going to work with our terrain and respect our topography because that's the way that an area like this would develop there are some challenges here and you can see that this is not the most forgiving of areas to develop in fact i would assume that this is not the first place to develop if there were more flat areas or if the city were able to this would likely develop first but this is close to our industry. It is part of the community. And uh, this is what is going to be available to us. So let's go ahead and let's get some roads laid out.
Okay, and I think this is about what we get. Now, we're gonna clear the trees out, but I will show you basically what I've done. So, I have looked and tried to figure out the locations that are easiest to develop within this fairly hilly terrain. Also, I've tried to ensure that we don't have a lot of connectivity through here. So, we I should say direct connectivity. We have a lot of connectivity through here. You can get around fairly simply, but we don't have any obvious streets where you would take to, to have a shortcut anywhere. So that's something that you'll see in some rural developments is that there's a lot of consciousness as to who would be traveling on the street. Would there be a reason to go down the road or not? <laughs> and, you know, that's, uh, I understand why you would do that. One of the considerations you'd have in a rural development like this is that you want that sense of seclusion and privacy. These are likely larger lots, maybe some more expensive homes. And as a result, that would be a consideration. So the roadway network, I always find this to be fascinating. We're looking at a roadway network. We're gonna get probably half as many homes up here as we have in Cuyard Shores, and it's gonna take four times as much space. <laughs> so it's 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 a development pattern that is, it, it works for the area that it's in. Uh, there are many people who live in areas like this that love it. I grew up in an area like this, and I thought it was pretty fine. And now I live in an urban area and I think that that's pretty fine as well. So different strokes for different folks. So the one thing that we're going to need to also think about is I want to add paths through here. I think that that's going to be something that's going to be very important for us. But first, I want to add some homes. We're going to do it very thoughtfully. We're going to place all of these individually because it's a rural area. And if you just go a little wild, it can be really uh, awkward looking. So we're going to go with our growables and I want them to all be at least four wide. So I want to make sure I've got the right ones. Yep, these are all four wide. Now, the other thing that we can do, we'll make this big. You can see the level that these are. So we've got level one, level two, level, you know. So I know that we can get away with level three, approximately, maybe level two. So if we type in our L2s, we could probably get away with most of these. Level one as well. So I would love to, so I think if I create a tag, so if I go L1 and I take all of these and I tag them, I've tagged that lower level homes. I'm gonna do that to all of these. Okay, so now what I've done is I've gone through and I've used tags. So I'm gonna grab my tag and I have lower as a tag. So lower level homes is what I had. Your tag can only be one word long, I guess. So now we've got that filtered. We'll select this right here. And now you can see that all the homes I selected here are within that tag. So this is awesome because now I can mix and match these. So I wanna look at some of these. Like this one right here, I don't love being part of this tag. So I can remove this custom tag through here. And now that one should go away if I refresh this. There we go. And now I have only homes that I want. I could probably get rid of some of these more, I guess, Californian looking, you know, Mediterranean style. There we go. So now I want to give each of these homes space. I'm going to remove the tree anarchy uh, off camera. I will re resolve this. And again, I've set the my modifier key to be the question mark. So I can just come through here now and place a home, hit the question mark. Get a new one, and I'm going to do that all the way through here. Okay, and that took a little while, but I think that the results speak for themselves. This looks like a natural little rural development. I actually think this might have turned out better than some of the other stuff that we built in the previous episode, and we're not even done yet. So that creation of tags is really, really helpful. Now this is paused, and I almost never do that, but I wanted to get the water pipes under here before we see lots and lots of abandonment. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, we should be able to run it and finally see this area grow. Our population is going to just explode. Let's take a look and see what happens. 
Ah, Grand City. <laughs> didn't take long at all. And we've unlocked a bunch of really interesting stuff. First of all, our inner city bus terminal, our bus metro hub. We're starting to see some transit options become available to us. Solar power plant. I don't know that we're going to do that, but uh, some interesting stuff. We get a third loan. Don't need that. We've been very fiscally prudent with our money, but we're not done growing. Let's let this go for another minute and see where we end up. Oh, did you see that? We just had our industry level up. It is happy now, and that's because it finally has employees. So we have met our goal there, and there are a number. We're going we're gonna to need to keep working towards other goals, but that is the primary one that we wanted to continue to work towards. So we're going to slow it down for a minute because we have some other work to do here. Okay, so just because we're in a rural area doesn't mean that we shouldn't have amenities. So we're going to add a number of amenities. First of all, and I think probably the most important one, let's see if we need a school. Now that we've built that high school, I am concerned that our elementary school capacity is going to be a, a bit of a problem. And you can see we are right on the edge. So I do think there would be value in adding an elementary school back here. So what we're going to do is add in one more road. Let's look at our terrain and see if there's a place where we could add this. Maybe we'll just do some actually right here. That's a pretty good spot. Everyone loves that. That's great. <laughs> Not surprising. And then some parks. So I've definitely seen rural dog parks. We have some space over here now. And look at that. That road that we added is absolutely chuck full of people. So clearly it was necessary. We're going to add in our rural dog park over here. And maybe another one over here. No, we'll, we'll skip it over here. What we will do... I believe that we have Parkify in here, which should allow me to take some of our amenities. Unfortunately, you have to have a park first before you can drop these amenities in. So that's what we're going to do. We'll make a small park over here. It'll be a city park, which is going to seem really crazy. Maybe even a nature reserve. I want to add in just a couple of small things. Maybe we, maybe we will actually make a small nature reserve. There we go. And isn't that just the weirdest shape you've ever seen for a nature reserve? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go with it, though, because I think it's going to work for us. So I want a small main gate. And we are going to add that right over here. And that's going to give us access to a whole bunch of stuff. So the, the unfortunate thing is all I really care about is the viewing decks. I really want those, but we haven't unlocked them yet. That said, this is going to be helpful for us regardless. So let's roll with it. I'm not going to use the self-leveling paths. I think that they're going to be kind of a distraction for us. I am going to turn the districts on an angle. So what we'll do is just kind of send this around. We're having lots of land value problems, and I have a solution for that. There was a comment that talked about the resolution for this, and the resolution really is uh, going into Rico, and you have the ability to turn off problems with land values. I'd really like to leave them on, though, if we can. Not problems. I want, I'd like, <laughs> like to leave on land values so that these buildings could progress if they want to. So I'm going to add in some side gates now. I, I, to get the land values up, I do think it's going to be important that we get these gates in here. You may have caught this. I didn't actually paint a park area. I painted a normal district, which is a good reminder that this is now part of the town of Cuillard. So we will expand Cuillard out. And now we have our park right there. So that will allow us to place our gates now, which is what we really cared about. And now we can finish up with our paths. So I'm going to actually I'll leave the district down because it does make it easy for me to be able to find where these are. And I should have my contours on as well, because when I don't have them on, I absolutely run these paths in unreasonable locations. Okay, so we have this little district here now, this little park, uh, Hickory Marsh is probably not the best name. We'll call it Hilltop Park for the time being. We're going to make this the main park, have an advertisement campaign, and really try to get people in here. We'll have recycling here, and hopefully this gets some folks to come and visit. There are a couple of places where you could enter for free, certainly a concern. 
but there's not much that we could do about it. I am going to add a crossing there so that people could make that continuous path through here. And then it looks like I missed one connection here. Let's add that as well. That one's a little steep, <laughs> truthfully, if we're being completely honest with ourselves, but we'll go with it. There we go. There we go. So there are some lumpies and bumpies, but we got to forgive a little bit of that. And now we've got all of these land value issues. So the the way that, to resolve this is likely to add some of those park amenities in here. Again, there's not a lot that I want to add in, which is really unfortunate. So let's see where we're at. How close are we with Hilltop Park? We're almost there with entertainment. It's really visitors and we don't have very many. So we'll add one campfire site, which should, I believe that should get us there. We'll add a couple of tents back here too. Try to get it away from the homes. I'm sure that that wouldn't be very popular to have people camping directly <laughs> with a few of your home. It's just a couple of spots. So that should be enough. The main concern now is going to be, yep, we have plenty of entertainment. The main concern is going to be getting people to actually come and visit. So we're going to turn that off. We'll speed this up a little bit and hopefully that gets us where we need to be. I'm going to add a few more paths through here to try to make connections to the rest of the development that's already occurred. And really that's just things like this. Just come through and be, again, thoughtful about your development. Now, if these easements weren't granted up front, they'd be incredibly challenging to get. So let's just say that we've already had them. Otherwise, we wouldn't get them. Oh, and we've got abandonment. <sighs> so there is a resolution for this. I don't love it. Uh, I guess that that's one. <laughs> I forced the downgrade of all of the buildings. And now we're at two here, which should do the trick for us. We've got mass abandonment, and that's really, really, really unfortunate. So I think if we come in here and we take a look at Rico Revisited, the one thing we could possibly do would be to look at complaint options and say non-Rico growable buildings will ignore the low land value complaint. And it looks like it's gone, but it looks like so are all out. No, no, it's still there. Nope, it resolved. <laughs> so we'll have to see if these other ones come back. I really would hate to, to need to come through and refresh all of those, but I will certainly do it if we have to. It's just one of those unfortunate things. And you know what? We're just going to do it. So I just reset all of those, which should get us in a pretty good place. A couple more here that uh, could be reset. I think these would come back eventually, but... If they're going to abandon, I want it to be because of crime, not because of the land value thing. So there we go. That's a little bit better. Now, through here, I think that we're going to be OK with what we have at this point in time. We could obviously use more police and fire, but we've got another solution for that. So let's go ahead. We're going to use our paintbrush, add some more trees. I'm going to take the brush strength down and the brush size up. And I'm going to look at our terrain. Actually, we'll take this down. What I really want to do is give a bit of separation between these homes, so some privacy with landscaping. Okay, and I think that this little district's looking pretty good now. A couple of spots like this where I think just densening up the densify, the dense, increase the density <laughs> of the trees isn't a bad thing. And then in areas like this where it's undevelopable, having that, either having a, a gigantic forested area where you could walk through there and, and check out the forest or completely ridding it of landscaping and making it a place where kids could play ball. Either one is a, a good solution. I'm gonna go with a densely forested lot though. This is a forest that would be very expensive to clear all of that. And if it's getting cleared, it's probably gonna be cleared for a profit by whomever owns it, which in that case, it, it might actually be owned by just one of the people on the block. There we go. So lots of criminals back here. Apparently that's that's who lives back here. And we've got this. Can't let our developer house go vacant. There we go. So I, I want to add more things back here. I really want some scenic overlooks and I want this to feel a little bit more complete than it does right now. But for the time being, I do think that we've got this 
in a pretty good place. It's given us some decent population. We've rebounded since we changed our Rico settings. So that was the key. I don't love it as a solution. It, something about it just feels wrong. But if it is our solution, it is our solution. And now you can see just how massive this is compared to the rest of the art. Oh my goodness. We're burning again in the same spot. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right, well, we've got one fire watchtower right here. I guess that's covering almost everything. We should probably place one more over here just to be safe. There we go. So we're good there. I think that this is, <laughs> we're, we're not good, but we're fine for now. <laughs> but we need to think about how we are gonna get people out of town, okay? Freight out of town in particular. And that comes down to this area right here. So this is gonna be the next project associated with the lumber company, and that is recruiting a freight operator into the area. We've already got existing lines, so it's really reactivating a prior line, which is a much easier sell. So with this, let's go ahead, we're gonna create a new road back here. And I'm sticking to just the grid. And we're running this along back here. Now, here's where we're going to put our new tr cargo train terminal. And you can see we've got some overlap, and I expected that. Now, I want to be able to run this road back here, and I'll show you why in a little while. But that's going to influence where I place this station. So we're going to place that right here. And then I'm going to use Move It. I selected everything. I have Alt held, and I'm going to just drag this up. Alt didn't do a thing for me, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> and there we go. Now here, hopefully, Alt will help me slide it. There we go. And now that lines up well. So feeling good about that. Let's look at our contours because we weren't really paying attention. And we are going to grade this out a little bit. But I just want to pull this back. We're going to get some separation. So this, again, the, the, the inspiration behind this facility coming to town is the lumber industry. So as a result, we're going to give the lumber industry first dibs on some of the most choice property for storage of their materials near this this new facility. So we're gonna run this back here. We'll run a road right behind it. Now we've got our highway here and one thing you can tell with the contours on is that the hill starts to creep in. So we wanna give our highway some prominence. So I'm gonna plan for the location of the highway and it's gonna go right alongside of this. I don't think we can run it all the way out of town right now but we can get pretty close and then we'll connect this up. And there we go. So this could also help us figure out our circulation pattern here at the train facility. Come in at a 90, perfect. So it's just a bunch of planning roads at this point in time, but it's gonna be very, very helpful for us in the very near future. So here, I'm gonna level this out again. I want to continue this road straight for as long as I can, and then we'll place uses along this road. Now, clearly these are gonna be, for the most part, industrial type uses but there might be a point at which this changes and we build something over here. So in this instance, this is a road that I would see the DOT building and uh, you know, it's one of those that probably could have been built on the map when it was when it was created, but it wasn't. So we'll just run with it as is. We're gonna add an industrial road here. We could have a circulation pattern if we wanted. I don't know that we're gonna need it. So we're gonna go without, we'll just have a two way road right here and then we'll run this straight back. And I'm going to run this back a little ways. The main reason I want this is I don't want that to be a gigantic cul-de-sac. I want to run this back here. And what you can see that we have now is a bit of a circulation pattern. We've got some messy stuff here. We're going to need to work on that. Easy enough. Jiggle, jiggle. And now we'll come into our surface painter and try to clean up some of the mess. Okay, that's pretty clean. Uh, and, and for surface painter, <laughs> very clean. It's it's very difficult to get this to look right, but I think that this looks pretty darn good. So now we need to get power and water over here. Maybe just water, nope, power as well. So we're gonna run this underneath the road and then I'm gonna send this straight back because we're gonna have some warehousing back here. And we, we know that that's gonna come right away. Now for our power connection, I think we could get away with just using one of our transformers to bridge this. So right at the corner here, I'm gonna place a transformer and hope that the power jumps. 
It does. We are golden. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And truthfully, uh, now that I think about it, we were going to place a few other, a, a few more things right along here. I didn't talk about it yet, but some of our city service buildings. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff over here now and that fire did go out. So that's good. So we're going to place our new police department and our new fire department over here. Now for this, I'm going to go with our vanilla fire department, right? Or police department right here. And then for our fire department, I really like this European firehouse. So we're going to go with that. We'll place those right next to each other. And that is perfect. And they're already responding to an event. <laughs> go figure. All right. And I think the very last thing that we need to do is focus on some of that storage that I talked about. So I'd love to expand the industry a little bit. I think we're going to need to save that for the next one but we are going to have some of our industrial storage over here. So let's go ahead and look at our storage options. We've got these small lumber yards. Now they are too big to fit in here, but we're going to make it work. This is going to be one of those situations where reasonably, I think a lumber yard, they'd make it fit to whatever the terrain is, not vice versa. But we're going to take some liberties here because it's a game and we can't make this asset what we want it to be. So, we're gonna go ahead, we'll grab the height here and pull this back. I'm just removing the sand here. Again, we'll extend this out just a little ways and then we're gonna come through and turn our brush strength size down. And I just wanna feather this out a little bit. And I think that's one of those terms that I use because of curly hair. <laughs> so if that makes any sense, you might have curly hair too. <laughs> there you go. All right, so it's not very high above above sea level, but we're going to roll with it. And behind this, I do think there would be value in having a path. If we're being completely honest with ourselves, there would have probably been value in separating these a little bit more. But I like the idea of having as much storage as we can. These are going to load up here and then drop this off right within here. Now, eventually, the other reason why we're adding these is that we're going to add some industry over here in our new community. So this community is going to be based on a town. So this will be a township. Let's build that right now. This will be the town of Evergreen. So we're not going to get to building Evergreen today, but this is where some of our next residential and industrial expansion will happen. So this will be supported by the lumber industry, which, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We're going to have to do something about this. I. I don't like turning fire spreading off, but this is a little insane. Serenity now. Serenity now. Serenity now. And the landfill is full. That could be part of the reason. <laughs> so waste processing is going to be a thing that we're going to need to think about as well. And we are going to need to obviously do more in terms of our fire coverage or turn off fire spreading. Why don't you let me know in the comments? Do you want me to leave fire spreading on and just resolve the issues? Because it is solvable. It is solvable. But in the meantime, holy cow, <laughs> we're just getting hammered, just getting absolutely destroyed. Now, again, part of this might be that our, our garbage processing status is bad. Yeah, we're right on the edge. So that could be a significant part of it. But the other part is that the game is just it goes hard on fires. It just it goes hard on fires. So maybe we just need to, to, to tell it to lighten up a little bit. Maybe, maybe that's what we need to do. Anyway, I think that we need to take a quick look at this beautiful asset, admire it, and have a brief city tour.
You can't really get a feel for just how large this fire is until you see it at night. The northern lights above it. It is beautiful. <laughs> the northern lights, not the fire. Although the fires, you know, it's interesting. It, it is really engulfing the entire community. So again, let me know in the comments how you feel about these. Should I just cut it off and, and, and make fire spreading stop? That also means, just so you know, disasters go off unless I add the mod in that I did in Clearwater County to reduce the fire spreading. It is a mod where it just reduces it by a modifier. Let me know in the comments what your preference is. I could go either way. You know, I don't love wholesale disabling portions of the game mechanic, but at the same time, I don't want it to take away from your enjoyment of the series. And uh, I want to know how you feel. So I think we're going to leave it here. <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.